Hello everyone. In this lecture, I want to talk about how to use the CARET package to perform cross-validation for imbalanced data in R. This course is actually the combination of oversampling and the basic cross-validation. So if you haven't studied those two topics, I listed the lecture videos in this video's comment section. Please study those two topics before you study this course. Let's talk about imbalanced data. A imbalanced data set refers to a data set with an extreme small percentage of successes. A success is the case that we are interested. We want to detect, study, and figure out. For example, in the loan default data set, if a customer didn't pay back mortgage on time, he or she will be considered a success in our study. Then we want to figure out what factors can influence the probability for the customer not to pay back mortgage on time. But a success case doesn't appear in practice frequently. For example, we could have 10,000 or over 10,000 data records in the data set, but only a few customers like 10 or 20 didn't pay back mortgage on time. 10 over 10,000 is a very small percentage. If we have a data set like that, then we call it a imbalanced data set. In the current package, we should use the downsample function to balance a imbalanced data set before cross validation. I want to use an example to show you the process. Some of the codes had been discussed in previous lectures, so I will not repeat the purpose of them. I will just copy the codes from this point point into the R software. You can download this point point in this video's comment section as well. Let's go to the R software. I will be using the loanalysis.csv dataset. I listed it in this video's comment section. You can download it into your working directory and then come back to the R software. Let's create a variable called uh, loan data to bring the source data into R. Let's take a look at it. As you can see, we record which customer paid back the mortgage on time, which customer didn't in the loan default column. And then we want to use average balance, age, all of these factors as independent to predict the probability for the customer paid back or not pay back the mortgage on time. This is the purpose of this study. But notice that loan default has zeros and ones. As I said in the previous lecture, caret doesn't accept zeros and ones. We must transform them into factors, right? We should use as dot factor and levels to transform zeros into no, ones into yes, right? We have uh, discussed this, so I will not repeat. Let me just uh, copy the code into the R software. Let's take a look at the transformed data set. Now you can see we transformed all zeros into no, all ones into yes. Now we are ready to perform cross-validation. Let's start the current package. It's ready to use. First, I want to split the original data set into training set and the testing set, right? We need to use create data partition. Let's give the result to a variable called the partition rule. Here I want to mention p equals to 0 0.7 again. The value of p means the percentage of original data you want to give to the training set. But as I mentioned in the previous lecture, CARET uses random sampling, which means 
in the training sets, the percentage of successes is as same as the percentage of successes in the original data set. Carrot doesn't use this oversampling automatically. We have to use downsample to perform oversampling process in the training set. I will show you very soon. Next, I want to apply the partition rule to the original data set to split it into training set and the testing set, right? But at this moment, because the success rate is so small in the original data set, in the training set, the success rate is extremely small as well. So at this moment, if you simply apply the partition rule to the original data set, we will get a training set with imbalanced data, right? So let's call this training set I am training set, imbalanced training set. And then we want to apply the partition rule to the original data set. This is as same as what we have been doing in the previous lecture. Next, let's create the, the testing set. We need to use negative partition rule. Let's take a look at how many successes and failures are in the training set. I will be using a function called uh, length and width to count the frequency of uh, successes and failures. So let me copy the code. The purpose of uh, length and width is if I meet uh, a yes answer, I will count once. If I meet uh, a no answer, I will count once as well. So eventually, I find out in the training set, I have uh, 548 successes and over 29,000 failures, right? Let's calculate the success rate. As you can see, it's about 1.8%. Uh, in the imbalanced training set, we have a success rate of 1.8%. Uh, That's very small, right? Obviously, the training set is imbalanced. The next step is very important. We need to use the downsample function to balance an imbalanced data set. Let me copy the code. This is the most important step when you process imbalanced data. When you use downsample, you need to take care of uh, two parameters. It's a uh, X parameter and a Y parameter. Let's talk about them. The Y parameter, we must tell the function based on which column we want to balance the imbalanced training set. Obviously, we want to match the number of customer who defaulted the mortgage with the number of customers who paid back mortgage on time. All of this information are stored in long default column. So that's why we need to tell the Y variable. We want to use a long default to make the balance. The X parameter indicates which columns you want to select from the imbalanced training set into the balanced training set. The function NCOL indicates the number of columns you want to select. If you use a negative NCOL, Basically, you are telling the downsample function that you want to select all columns from the imbalanced training set into the balanced training set. This is the most important step when we perform cross-validation for imbalanced data set. So after the transformation, let's see the number of uh, success cases and failure cases in the training set. Let's use the length and weight function again. Now you can see we balanced the, the imbalanced training set. We have the same number of uh, successes and failures in the training set. So if some classmates have studied oversampling, you should click. This is exactly what we did in the data partition with oversampling, right? This is the purpose of a downsample. 
Next, we can repeat the previous steps we learned in the basic cross-validation to build some samples and then perform uh, accuracy check. So I will not repeat them in this lecture again. I listed them in the prime point so you can download them and then try it out, how to build models and uh, measure the accuracy. I will just show you one example. First, we need to create a split rule and then build a model, right? Next, we want to uh, apply the model to the testing set and then build the confusion matrix. This is what we have been discussing in the previous lecture. So let's copy this course. Now you get the accuracy results of a decision tree model. The reason I want to show you this example is usually in practice, it's very difficult to decide if a data set is balanced or imbalanced when you just get the data set. Usually what we do when we perform cross validation is we just treat all data sets as a balanced data set and then run the cross validation by using cared package. But uh, if a data set is really imbalanced, after you run the confusion matrix, right, you check the results, you check a post pre value and a neck pre value. If the data set is imbalanced, you will get a result NAN for these two factors. That means your data set is imbalanced. It's impossible for the software to build an accurate model. If you find the NAN for these two factors, you should think using down sample to balance the imbalanced data set before cross-validation.